This is really simplifying what is one of my favorite series of wars in all of history. But basically, Sparta believes that Athens has grown too quickly in both population and military power as a result of how they're handling the Delian League. And what had started as a cold war, where neither of these two groups, the Athenians and the Spartans, really do anything, turns hot. Hot, excuse me. Um, the chief result of the war, kind of skipping to the end, is that the Athenian Empire is pretty much destroyed. The subject states the Delian League are liberated. Pericles himself gets voted out. He's ostracized. Um, Athenians second-guess their political system, and their form of democracy gives way to basically a form of tyranny that lasts for the next 30 years. This also opens the door for somebody else to come in and conquer Greece other than the Persians. Okay, so basically in the war, got several allies of Athens, several allies of Sparta. They get involved in a large-scale war that starts in 431. It's a really lopsided uh, the Spartans have a great military in terms of their army. The Athenians still have all those triremes, so they've got a great navy. They also have really strong walls that Pericles has built so they can retreat behind them. And we know already what it's like to attack cities with walls. Not a really good move. Athenians raid the Peloponnesus, the area around Sparta by sea. Um, also here, something that's kind of good and contemporary pops up. Lots of disease comes into play. In 430, there is a huge plague in Athens that kills lots of people. That's part of the context in which Pericles is writing. There are a variety of treaties and outbreaks of fighting, but over the next several decades, war goes on continuously. Spartans ally with the Persians in 405. They end up capturing the Athenian fleet at one point. Um, Following that, democracy in Sparta goes into decline. For a long time, Sparta kind of assumes the role of the dominant city-state in all of Athens, but then they slide down. Other city-states do it too, Thebes and Corinth. But the real end result of this war is that there's a lot of political fragmentation. City-states, Poleus, don't trust each other. This idea of a common Greek identity has really been shattered by what Athens and what Sparta have done, but especially Athens. And now you've got the door open for somebody else to say, Greece isn't united. We might be able to take advantage of that. This also opens the door to a lot of people reflecting on what has happened and thinking about how they can learn from it and how they can learn where people fit into this. So the next bit of this lecture is going to talk about the writing of history and the development of philosophy.